Denver one time, and some guys came and they said, Hovind, we know you teach the earth is only 6,000 years old. Uh, we'd like to prove to you you're wrong. Would you come with us, please? I said, sure. They took me to this big freezer in Denver, outside of Denver in Lakewood. It's the National Ice Core Laboratory. 36 below zero in there. They put this big suit on me, big hat, big gloves, big boots. I was freezing in five seconds when I walked in there. I got Florida blood, you know, it's real thin. They said, Hovind, we go to Greenland and we drill holes through the ice. You know, government job. And we take this big pipe, we drill it down in, and we bring this ice core out of the middle of the pipe, and we save it in this big freezer here in Lakewood, Colorado. We have 10 ice cores stored in this freezer. They said, they, they took me over and showed me one of the ice cores. They said, you see these rings on here? It looks like tree rings, dark light, dark light. I said, oh yeah, it's real clear. They said, well, what happens in the summer, the snow melts a little bit. And then it refreezes and makes clear ice. Shows up dark on the picture. In the winter, the snow just packs. It doesn't get a chance to melt. And so it shows up as a white layer. So these layers represent summer, winter, summer, winter, summer, winter, summer, winter. They said, now the deepest hole we've ever drilled is 10,000 feet deep. And we counted these ice rings, and there were 135,000 of them. And now you're going around telling everybody the earth is 6,000 years old. We can prove it's at least 135,000. I said, fellas, aren't you assuming those are annual rings? See, they didn't know about the lost squadron, apparently. But in World War II, some airplanes ran out of gas and landed in Greenland. Has anybody ever heard of the lost squadron? Okay, it's been on TV a bunch of times. Well, the airplanes got left there in 1942. They went on and fought the war. Everybody forgot about them until a rich millionaire from Kentucky got a brilliant idea. Go find those airplanes and bring them home. He went there looking for the airplanes. They had to use ground-penetrating radar to penetrate the ice, and they located the planes. They melted a hole to get down to a P-38. It was 263 feet below the surface. They melted this hole down to get to the plane, took the plane apart, and brought the pieces back up through the hole and put it back together in Middleboro, Kentucky, not too far from here. How far is Middleboro from Knoxville? Uh, two hours, maybe? Okay. The plane's up, that's where its home base is, Middleboro. Well, the planes were in the ice for 48 years. They were 263 feet down. That's uh, five and a half feet a year. Now, the deepest hole they've ever drilled is 10,000 feet. You divide that by five and a half, you get 1,800 years. I know deeper layers get squished, called glacial fern, so really 4,000 years is plenty of time to put all the ice at the North and South Pole. So why isn't there more ice at the North and South Pole? Hmm. I visited the museum and saw the guy who dug out the airplane. His name is Bob Carden. I said, Bob, <clears throat> when you went down to get to that airplane, did you, melt through, did you go through ice rings? He said, oh yeah, many hundreds of them. I said, now wait a minute. How can there be hundreds of ice rings in 48 years? Shouldn't there be somewhere around 48? He said, who told you those are annual layers? He said, that doesn't represent summer, winter, summer, winter. It represents warm, cold, warm, cold, warm, cold. You can get five of those in one week in Knoxville, can't you? Yeah. But here's a guy still calling them annual layers. Now, either he's ignorant or he's lying. I hope he's just ignorant, because ignorance can be fixed. You see, stupid is forever, but ignorance can be fixed. That's the difference, by the way. Uh, a guy that works with the Eskimo said, Brother Hovind, I got uh, 15 layers of snow on my car in eight hours. Not 15 inches, 15 distinct layers of snow. Hmm. You kids are going to be taught that each of the layers of the earth is a different age. They've got Cenozoic, Mesozoic, Paleozoic, Archeozoic. Did you know the whole geologic column is baloney? It doesn't exist. We covered that on video four. All over the world, petrified trees are found standing up, connecting these rock layers. Petrified tree connecting a bunch of layers can't be millions of years difference in the age of those layers. One in Cookville, Tennessee, not far from here. The bottom is coalified, the center is petrified, the top is coalified again. Runs through two coal seams. Cover more on that on video six about coal formation. Mount St. Helens blew trees into Spirit Lake. They're going to petrify very quickly, standing up. That's the way they sank to the bottom. They got waterlogged. Wood petrifies quickly. Here's petrified firewood. Here's a petrified fish giving birth. It does not take millions of years to give birth. 
petrified cowboy boot with the cowboy's legs still in it. The article's on the table down here called The Limestone Cowboy. The Mississippi River is depositing sediments at the rate of 80,000 tons every hour. 80,000 tons of mud comes down and dumps off around New Orleans, and that delta is growing larger and larger. They studied the delta pretty carefully and say it probably took about 30,000 years to put all that mud out there in the delta. Okay, well then I have a question. If the earth is millions of years old, why isn't the whole Gulf of Mexico full of mud by now? They'll say, Hovind, it's 30,000 years. That proves the Bible's wrong. The Bible says 6,000. I know, but see, I've got a theory about that. Here's my theory. I believe 6,000 years ago, God made everything. 4,400 years ago, there was a flood. As the flood water was running off, whoosh, about half of that mud washed out there in 20 minutes. So it looks like it took 30,000 years to get the mud out there. It took about 20 minutes. And then 4,400 years since then, okay? A friend of mine from Louisiana is a pastor of a church. He said, Brother Hovind, I used to work in the oil field drilling in the, Missis in the, Gulf, of Mississippi, in the Gulf of Mexico, drilling for oil. He said, we drilled down through 14,000 feet of mud and hit trees 60 feet tall, standing up. 60 foot vertical trees under 14,000 feet of mud. Hmm. More about that on video six. Here's a picture of the oldest tree on the planet. It's called the bristlecone pine. We've got a piece of bristlecone in our museum in Pensacola. It's only 30 inches in diameter and it's 700 years old. You can count the rings with a magnifying glass. It grows real slow. Now, tree ring dating is not an exact science. Trees can produce two rings a year or three rings a year. Okay, And be very careful about tree ring dating with overlapping sequencing. we we'll cover more on that during Q&A time if you'd like. But the oldest tree in the world, this textbook says, is 4,300 years old. Earth's oldest organism. That's a pretty old tree. But I've got a question. If the earth is millions of years old, why don't we have an older tree someplace? Why would the oldest tree be 4,300 years old? I have a theory about that. Now here's my theory. I believe about 6,000 years ago, God made everything, and 4,400 years ago, there was a flood. And so I predict the oldest tree ought to be somewhere around 4,300 years old. It is. 